Hello basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today I'm going to show you a very rare full court press that you may or may not have ever gone up against. However, this is a great full court press that you could run to really confuse the other teams that you're playing against. So let's get down to the clipboard and let's check these out. Okay, so first, how this is going to be starting is we're going to have three players at half court, and then we're going to have one player who is above the or on the other side of the free throw line extended, and then we're going to have another player who is between the free throw line extended and the point, the, the three point line. So, basically, what's going to happen? Let's say player two gets that ball. I want to see player one right on to player two blue and most most press breaks you're gonna have player three going back towards the middle now going from there we do not want any of these three players to be going on the other side of half that's going to weaken this defense and we do not want that to happen next we do not want player two to go on the other side of this free throw line extended. He is staying on this side of it. The reason for that is because obviously it can weaken the zone. And if we have player two dip below, now that's opening up the kill zone, which is the middle of the court. We don't want that happening, so player two needs to keep his butt there. Next, what's going to happen is most likely we're going to have player 2 passing back to player 3. At that point, we're going to be having player 1 pop back. And now, player 3 has the decision to try and drive on player 1, which would not be successful. Or he can pass out to one of the wings. Now, what we're going to be having is once that ball gets past that free throw line extended, whether it be player 2 dribbling past or not what's going to happen is it's going to be staying in single coverage so if player two for example tried to beat player one off the dribble player one is going to continue to try and force player two over towards that sideline and if you don't already know in a full court trap or a full court press defense what I want to see, and what every coach wants to see, is for the offensive player to get trapped along the corner of the sideline and the half-court line. The reason for that is because if that ball is trapped there, then they cannot go back over half, and a trap would have a double team in the corner, which would then result in, obviously, a dead ball. So, what we're going to be having now is... Player 1 to stay single coverage and player 2 to continue to guard that middle part of the court. If player 4 was to dip down, we're now going to have player 5 dip down to guard player 4. If player 4 is not dipping down, let's say he cut towards the middle, that's going to be player 2's area and player 5 is still guarding the middle of the court but on this side of half. Meanwhile, if, for example, we go back to player 3 and he passes over to player 1 and player 1 is past that free throw line extended, obviously player 1, is not, player one red is not guarding him, so we're going to have now player 1 red going up and filling in player 2's spot and player 2 to go out and force player 1 blue towards that kill zone right there, which is the trap area for players in this case two and three red to trap player one blue again same idea where if for example player five blue dipped down we're going to have player five dip down as well to guard him but player four red is going to move over to guard that middle area of the court player one he is going to be then the one who is cutting off any of the reverse passes towards the other side or towards the middle of the court we're also going to be having if player one does make the decision to pass back to player three 
we're going to have player one going back to guard player three blue, but we need player two red to cover that middle section once again. So this isn't exactly the easiest full court press to run, however it is a very successful one, even though it, at first it doesn't look like you're overpowering the other team, like you might see in a 3-1-1 or that you might see in a diamond 1-2-1-1 press. It's not, it doesn't look overpowering at first, but when you start having teams passing the ball and circling the ball back around in the backcourt so that they can try and finally get the ball past half, it's going to be running that eight second clock very quickly. And if they keep on reversing the ball back around to try and get the ball past half, what's going to happen is that eight second clock, that eight second ticker, the referee counting to the eight seconds, that's going to be basically the one, the thing, the one thing that's going to be stopping that team from getting past half. It's not going to be the fact that you're overpowering them and trapping them early along the sideline. What's going to be happening is the fact that it it's such a weak up front zone and it's taking every long pass away and the middle pass away that now what's going to be happening is they're just going to be turning over the ball and it's going to be most likely either a dead turnover or the fact that they've passed the ball towards the middle of the court that's covered or the long bomb that's also covered by those three players in the front court. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and of course, let me know what you think. I want to know if you're running this press as well. I'll see you guys again later on today for the second video of the day.